Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. I thought I'd give you a little look today at my little cherry shrimp colony. All doing really, really nicely. We've had lots of little babies running around on the glass. I'm not sure if you can see some in the background there. There's some on the rocks. But what I've done is I had one of my females actually died. So last week I actually took her out and performed a very, very delicate operation and took the eggs from her. There's a few videos online actually where you can see this being done. I was gonna film it, but the way it went, I thought I'd get them off as quickly as I could and put them into a little, little tumbler which I made quite a while back now and I'll link that in the description below if you fancy making one. I actually made it out of a heater, a glass heater tube that was faulty and broke. So I took it apart and used my little diamond saw to cut a section out, drill a hole, and put a bit of pipe in. I'll show you that in a minute, because we've got some lovely little babies in there now. And uh, they were tumbling away for a few days. I was trying to get them to hatch so you could see it, but I didn't catch them actually hatching out, which is a bit of a shame. But um, there must be maybe 20, could be a few more in there, but we'll have a look at those little guys in a minute. But all these are doing absolutely really nicely. Now I'll get in a little bit closer for you. Ah, there you go, there's a little bit better picture for you. I put in some of the homemade food that I make and they're always all over that, all that do, all the different leaves and the different foods that I put in there. Spirulina powder and different things that I use. You can go back and check on the playlists there on how I make all that food if you're interested in making some for yourself and saving yourself a few, a few quid, a few dollars, you can um, go back and check that out. Very easy, good fun to make on a rainy day. Now I've split this colony up since. I took quite a few back to uh, my local fish shop and um, got some credit for those. But they've, uh, by thinning them out, they breed quite quite readily now. And if you look, there's a few buried females along them. I've got a little tiny um, blue-eyed lemon pleco there from that hatch we had a while ago. He's still very small, that one, so I put him in there on his own. So he's um, he's got all that, all the glass he can go up and rasp away on and get him you can see his little dark belly there which is full of uh, algae which he's which he's sucking off of the rocks which the shrimp can't remove his little raspy teeth will soon pull that off so um he'll start putting on a few pounds <laughs> a few pounds sorry a few uh, a bit of weight shortly which will be nice to see right what i'm going to do now i'm going to go up into the water column here and i'll show you these little babies i can zoom in on them for you now there they are, you can see them there in the little bubbler which I made going back quite a while now. It was an interesting little build I did on a Saturday afternoon. I'm going to try and get in as close as I possibly can without getting blurry. There you go, there they are. Absolutely, literally hatched out two days ago. And just starting to get that colour coming in now. But I took them away from the parent that died sadly. Not sure how she died because she was the only one. She may have been old or maybe she had a bad molt. But these things, these things do happen. But these are tiny. We have lost a one there. There's a little one there that hasn't made it. So I'll have to remove him out of there. But the majority of them are doing okay. And they're big enough now to, uh, to release back into the aquarium. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just shift the light out of the way. You can see how small they are to my, to my thumb, look. There you go, that's how small those babies are. Microscopic little dudes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this airline now. I'm gonna lower it into the, into the tank and let that sink. There you go. And I'll just zoom back out again. Oh, there's one whizzed out already. And as they get up into that water column now, what'll happen is those bubbles will pick them up in that in that little bit of a current which is being sucked up because the air, as that's rising, it's pulling in air through the sponge, okay, which tumbles them and their eggs just in here. And then I've normally had another sponge underneath when they were eggs. I've taken that sponge out with my long tongs from the top 
pulled that out and I've just had it out of the water so more air can flow through and now they can be released now into the tank so they're all going to come out on their own time let me just drop it down a little bit more there you go and that's some of those crazy thermoplastic straws I'm not sure if you made if you remember I made that um, the acclimator, the drip acclimator. Now with these crazy straws, they're the ones you put at your kid's party and they're all twisted or you get love hearts in them and all the different things. Now if you, if you put them in boiling hot water, they all uncurl and you can make some weird and wonderful things with them, okay? So uh, go and watch that video on how I made this and how I made the drip acclimator. If I remember, I'll put them both in the description box so you can go and have a look how I made them because it's an interesting build and it makes a good little siphon as well to uh, do water changes and drip acclimators and all that kind of stuff so um, they're not in any hurry to come out there's one come out one on the glass there and I haven't cleaned the glass on the front because these little guys will go up the glass and they'll feed off of that algae which is growing on the glass now with baby shrimp as soon as they hatch they don't really move very far away from where they're born so um, I'll just set you up and they'll keep the camera a little bit still. Oh, there you go, that's a little bit better. Now you can see everything going on. You should see them come out now as they, uh, as they rise up. But yes, like I was saying guys, with the, when they're first born, they tend to stay very close to where they were born. You'll, you'll find them a lot of the time in your sponge filters, in amongst the ribs, they go in amongst that and that's where they'll be feeding off of the filter. So it's important that you get some food for the babies. Now, this is the stuff that I use, okay? It's called Biozyme, and that is an amazing food. It's, um, it's got all different bacteria and different cultures in there for the baby shrimp, okay? And it's like a powdered food, so you mix it up in the water and let it disperse all over the tank. Make yourself a little bottle. You can use one of these straws as well. I'll try and link all these videos together so you can go back and you can watch them all if you want to make something. And you can puff it in the tank and that will cover everything in a fine, fine um, layer of this stuff. And, um, and, the, and the babies then can find it because they don't like moving around. They like to go and they like the food to come to them. So, But it's not long before they, um, they start venturing out and looking for the food themselves but it's quite a, an important time guys for baby shrimp and this is when a lot of people lose a lot of them because they haven't got sufficient food for them in the water column okay so it's imperative that you put that in um, there's other one there's bacteria I think as well is another one you can use and gen chem polytase um, is another one I haven't got any of that left at the moment but those three are quite important to, uh, to, to, to put in there okay you can put yeast in, a little bit of yeast in the water as well, mix that up, a bit of yeast powder, that'll do the same as well, if you haven't got any of that, but go sparingly with that, okay. But they're all looking, um, all looking good. You can see the babies, it's still in the pot there, there's a few come out, but there's still the majority left. I'll just, there you go, I've just taken that sponge, that sponge has come out the bottom now. And I'll just push it out now with the tongs. There it goes. And now the babies are free to come out. There you go, they're all out as quick as that. And now they're gonna go and find a lot of food on the bottom. I can put that little hatcher out of the way for next time. Grab my little sponge with the tongs, squeeze the water out of that, and put that up there for next time. So we've got lots of little babies in there now. In fact, if you look at the back, I'll just close this down a bit. If you look on the back of the tank there, you can see a lot of them hanging off the side of the glass.
but they're very very small and once you get them into the um, into the tank they're very very hard to see they camouflage themselves so well that tree that I made is growing absolutely crazy at the moment the Monte Carlo is starting to move now it's not growing as well as it would have been if it was in some uh, proper you know more of a plant soil based media but um, the Ricky has gone mad and this little sprig the plants I put in there as well are doing that was only a little tiny little bit down it's similar to the uh, Elodia we've got the CO2 running well there's the colour of the CO2 and that's where you want it you see same colour as that and everything's nice and green amazing stuff anyway what I thought I'd do is just shoot off down to my pet shop and I'll have a quick look around in this and I'll just do a little bit of filming down there I think just so you can see if there's anything weird and wonderful in there that we can have a look at okay well there you go guys look at that little tiny baby Mabu puffer and if you've seen Cory from Aquarium Co-op Murphy how big he's got that's how big this guy's gonna get so uh, do your homework before you buy one of these guys, okay? Got some stunning little silver arowanas up here. Look at those guys, beautiful pinks around the leading edges of the fins. Amazing jumpers, these guys. Tight fitting lids are a must, that's for sure. And down in this tank here, we've got a monstrous fire here. Look at the size of that guy. He's huge. That's my hand. And they're going to get a lot bigger than that as well. Load of little red terrors in there as well. Uh, look at these guys. We've got a heap of uh, giant African fan shrimps in here. You remember Vlad, my big one that I had? These are little baby ones. Look at those guys finning away, grabbing those food particles out of the water column. And also there's a load of big tigers, king tigers in here as well. Look at those guys. Beautiful, really nice condition, breeding age as well. In with a load of little corries. Wow guys, look at the size of that. He is massive, look. And there's two of these guys in here, big tiger fish. 300 pound each. Not very stable at the moment, a bit stressed in there. As you can see, normally their colorations would be very, very separated, that gold and the black bars, but they go dark when they're stressed. This one's not too bad, but this guy's very, very dark. But once they stable up, they're gonna be absolutely stunning. They really are. If I had 600 pound now, I'd run off with them. <laughs> Beautiful, look at that. Need a big tank, mind. Well, look at these guys. We've got some stunning long fin clownfish here. Look at that, absolutely beautiful the things they're doing with fish these days. I know a lot of you won't like them, but very graceful looking fish, aren't they? You just see them now in a big anemone. Beautiful, real nice pair of fish there. And here's all the little babies. <laughs> I could spend hours in here. Yep, I always keep my eye open when I'm down these places, just to see if there's any new things that I can breed. Have a look through this vast bank of tanks they've got all the way down there, all the way down to the goldfish section. And sometimes you'll get a couple that have, have been bought back because they've outgrown the tank, and you can pick a nice pair out. If I see a nice pair of any species, I'll film them. There you go, for you, those of you out there that love your goldfish, look at these beautiful arandas. Nice little assortment there, going through. Some smaller ones down there. Well, they're not around us, those. Look at these guys, there's some ranchus in there. Arandas, black moors. Absolutely amazing, that colour. Give me some food. There you go, guys. We've got some beautiful epistogrammas down here. Look at the colours on those.
a couple of gold rounds in there as well, I think, lurking about. Over the other side. Hello, you lot. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Got some lovely albino crebensis in here as well. Look at those guys. Beautiful big French angel there, just starting to transform from its juvenile coloration into the adult coloration there. Yes, that was a train you just heard go by. Train track runs right outside the, the back of the aquarium shop. Nice little trigger up there, nice little pink tail trigger. And a stars and stripes buffer. Hello mate. Munching machine. And also I'd like to give a huge thanks to uh, Lucas from uh, LR Brett's for uh, giving me a shout out on his uh, one of his last videos. Really appreciate that mate, thank you very much. And uh, if you're not familiar with Luke's channel, pop across and have a look. Drop him a sub because he's a he's a, he's a knowledgeable guy, and um, also he's got a great little YouTube channel. So uh, go and pay him a visit. Anyway, um, like I said, guys, with some of the fish that you saw down at my local pet shop down there, that big mabu was well, not a big mabu, that small mabu puffer, but um, it's going to grow big. You know, they they huge those things can get. I mean, the tail alone can be a foot long, and um, as like with the arowana, you know, you're talking could get up to three feet long, and um, and obviously those big tiger fish as well. Um, you're going to need huge tanks for those, and unless you're really specialised and things, you can buy these. You know, these things are going to outgrow your tank in no time at all, and it's not going to be very nice for them. Um, I know some people keep them, they keep them in ponds and different things like that, which are ideal, you know, if you've got a pond or sort of like an eight or nine foot, three foot by say two foot or something like that, you know, you can house something in there, nice little bit of rock work and some wood, that can be quite effective. But it's got to be a big, big old system to house these sort of fish. Otherwise, it's not really fair to keep them in my opinion, but, um, but that's just my opinion. And um, anyway, I think I'm going to leave that one there for this week, guys. Um, been doing lots of work in the coral room, things are coming along in there and hopefully we'll, we'll pop back and we can have a, a closer look at that on another video. But until then, take care of yourselves, you're all stars, love you loads and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my